good morning students so in the previous class we people have seen the structure of a anatropous ovule or we can say it is a megasporangium so let us uh, do do the uh, brief revision of the anatropous ovule and in the today's class we are going to see the types of the ovule and based on the integuments present here we are going to see once again the types there so just we'll do the revision of the previous class that is structure of the megasporangium or anatropous ovule so as you have studied that the following parts will be there first of all anatropous ovule is a inverted ovule and then we are going to see the following parts that is micropyle funicle chalasa outer integument inner integument also if people have seen the embryo sac that embryo sac is also called as female gametophyte you people have seen the nucellus you people have seen the hilum and the raphe funicle if we see the definition funicle is the stalk of the ovule then the hilum is the point of attachment of the funicle and the body of the ovule raphe is nothing but the ovule is attached to one side so that ridge formed between the body of the ovule and the uh, uh, hilum in between the body of the ovule and the hilum the ridge is formed that is called as what raphe and also uh, we people have seen the chalasa chalasa is the base of the ovule what chalasa is it is the base of the ovule then we are going uh, we have seen the micropyle what is micropyle here students micropyle is a thing but it is the opening of the ovule produced by the nucellus or we can say mouth of the ovule nucellus is a diploid sporophytic tissue which is going to provide the nutrition to the developing embryo sac so this is about the parts what we have seen there so embryo sac is a also called as what a female gametophyte embryo sac is also called as what female gametophyte and this female gametophyte is consisting of following cells you people have seen in the yesterday's class that is antipodal cells will be there so antipodal cells are also called as what vegetative cells then next is we are going to see towards a micropyle we are going to see an egg apparatus what is that egg apparatus it is the combination of the egg and the synergies two synergies will be there one egg will be there so those synergies are also called as helper cells or supportive cells which will make a way to the pollen tube to get inside the uh, uh, that uh, ovule the embryo sac then next uh, uh, we'll come to the central cell here central cells are haploid cells and these haploid cells are uh, when, at the time of fertilization when they are fused together at the time of fertilization when they are fused together they become diploid in nature how they will become they will become diploid in nature and this diploid nature is called as secondary nuclei what do we call students it is called as what secondary nuclei now we are going to see the next concept that is outer integument and the inner integument as i have already told you that about the integuments we will see in detail in the next class so integuments are the coverings or the layers which are protecting the embryo sac and also the inner cells apart from this after fertilization apart from this after fertilization these integuments are converted into two layers that is the outer testa and the inner tegma when the ovule itself is converting into a seed then integuments are converting into a two layers that is outer testa and the inner tegma now students based on the integuments once again we are going to see the types of the ovules here based on the integuments we are going to see the types of the ovules the very first type is unitegmic unitegmic means a presence of single integument unitegmic means what presence of single integument is called as unitegmic what is unitegmic here presence of single integument so that we are going to see in the normally in the higher dicots especially the sunflower family 
composite family we can say and also we are going to see in the gymnosperms understood what is unitegmin presence of a single integument example here is we can get higher dicots that is the sunflower family and the composite and the gymnosperms next is bitegmic bitegmic means what presence of two integuments what is bitegmic presence of two integuments is called as bitegmic integument and uh, bitegmic ovule and example here is we can give cruciferae and the malvaceae family the malvaceae family especially the hibiscus families and all we can consider here yeah, the malvaceae and the cruciferae family are considered as a bitegmic ovule tritegmic so this is rarely present in the angiosperms tritegmic means presence of three layer of integuments so this is called as what tritegmic ovule and uh, example here is asphodelus we will say asphodelus is the example of the tritegmic ovule last one is ertegmic ovule now students ertegmic means the ovule is present without integuments what is ertegmic here the ovule is present without integument is called as what ertegmic ovule and normally this ertegmic ovules are present in the parasitic plants like loranthus sandalwood aloe that your uh, sandalwood tree what do we say sandalwood uh, tree and the loranthus some of the parasitic plants are also there okay so in these parasitic plants and uh, the tree we are going to see that some of the ovules are not made up of the integument so that is why we will call them as a ertegmic in ovules understood so these are the types of the ovules based on the number of the integuments present in the ovule so first one is unitegmic second one is bitegmic the third one is tritegmic the fourth one is ertegmic so unitegmic means presence of single integument and the family here is higher dicots and the sunflower and gymnosperms bitegmic means two integuments will be there to cruciferae and malvaceae we can give the example tritegmic means three integuments will be there asphodelus is the example ertegmic means uh, there is no integuments present in them and the example is antelum album is a common one so whatever you are reading here this is not just for the theory but for the concern of the cft and the need it is very important you should have the knowledge of the other types of ovules also based on the number of the integuments okay now next is also we are going to see the types of ovules so you people have seen exactly for theory concern and all we have seen the anatropous ovule that apart from the anatropous ovule we are also seeing five more types of the ovules here okay we are also seeing five more types of ovules here just i'll do the points that how the structure will be you people have to see this uh, textbook for the structure okay now here first one is orthotropous ovule what is the first here is orthotropous ovule so here body of the ovule is straight and directly directed to over the funicle hilum and micropyle that is they are lying on the same line body of the ovule is straight and uh, funicle hilum chalasa and micropyle are lying on the same line and next is amphitropous ovule amphitropous ovule is nothing but body of the ovule is body of the ovule and embryo sac are curved here curved embryo sac and body of the ovule we are going to see in the amphitropous ovule example here we can see cruciferous okay next is campylotropous ovule campylotropous ovule is nothing but body is curved but embryo sac is straight hilum chalasa and micropyle come nearby to the embryo sac okay body is curved here like this it will be embryo sac will be straight hilum funicle and chalasa will be nearby to the embryo sac that is called as what campylotropous ovule example caspals and the capparis next is circinotropous ovule the ovule which turns completely at 360 degree is called as what circinotropous ovule so funicle becomes coiled around the ovule 
So example here is Upanishad we can see. Then hemi anatropus ovule. Here the body is bent at 90 degree to the funicle. Micropylon chalas are lying in one straight and uh, line, straight line at right angles to the funicle. Example is ranunculus. See these are the types of the ovules. The structure you have to see the textbook and this is very important for the need point of view. Not for the theory purpose, don't worry. But uh, need for purpose, it is very important. You should have the knowledge of the types of ovules. See, once again, I'll repeat. Five types of ovules are there. Orthotropous ovule, amphitropous ovule, campylotropous ovule, circinotropous ovule, and the hemianatropous ovule. So, this completes your types of ovules based on the integuments and also types of ovules based on the shape. Okay, now uh, some of the questions I will give you regarding the, these uh, what we have seen structure. So with a neat label diagram, so you should do the assignment. Okay, you have to do the assignment students. So here listen with a neat label diagram. Explain the structure of anatropous ovule. It is very, since it is very important for 5 marks. Okay, since it is very important for 5 marks, you have to draw the structure and you have to write the points what I have done the explanation here. Write down. So with a neat label diagram. With a neat labeled diagram. Explain the structure of anatropous ovule. Explain the structure of anatropous ovule which is very important for 5 marks ok and next question is with a neat labeled diagram with a neat labeled diagram explain the structure of female gametophyte Explain the structure of female gametophyte which is very important for 3 marks. It is compulsory. Okay. This one is structure of female gametophyte and structure of anatropous ovule. You should know compulsory. In the megasporangium, we still megasporangium and the embryo sac concept. Whereas in the microsporogenesis, what we have seen is the process of microsporogenesis was important and the structure of TS of young anther it was very important. Okay, so this completes your megasporangium, pistil, and the female gametophyte. Next, what we have to see is megasporogenesis. So we are going to see what next here megasporogenesis. So what is megasporogenesis, students? Megasporogenesis means the process of formation of megaspores from a single megaspore mother cell is called as megasporogenesis. What is megasporogenesis here? Process of formation of Megaspores from a single megaspore mother cell. From a single megaspore mother cell is called as megasporogenesis. What do we call for it? Megasporogenesis. Okay. Process of formation of a megaspores from a single megaspore mother cell is called as megasporogenesis. Okay. And this megasporogenesis process starts from the archaeosporial cell which is present near to the nucellar region. Okay. So you people have seen the nucellus. What is nucellus here? Nutritive tissue which provides the nutrition to the embryo cell. What is nucellus here? It is a nutritive tissue which provides the nutrition to the embryo sac. So, from the nucellar cells, 
hypodermal cells will divide and just it is going to convert into archaeosporium cells. And that archaeosporium cells undergo two uh, divisions. Archaeosporial cell undergo division and produces two types of cells. How many types of cells here? Two types of cells. One is called as parietal cell and the other one is called as sporogenous cell. Outer parietal cell and inner sporogenous cell. See, the whatever the cells will be there from the nucellar region, see here. So, nucellar region will be there. Okay. So, this nucellar region is divided into two cells. So, here we can see the nucellus and here cells will be there. So, it undergoes division, periclinal division. So, it is called as archaeosporium. Okay. It is called as what? Archaeosporium. So, this archaeosporium undergoes periclinal division. Okay, archaeosporium undergoes periclinal division and forms two cells and forms two cells that is outer parietal cell outer parietal cell and inner sporogenous cell outer parietal cell and inner sporogenous cell. Now students, later this inner sporogenous cell, later inner sporogenous cell undergo meiotic cell division. The inner sporogenous cell undergo meiotic division and they are going to form the four daughter cells. See here, the sporogenous cell undergo meiotic division and forms the four daughter cells. Okay. So these among four daughter cells, three are degenerated. Among four daughter cells, three are degenerated and one will be remaining. And one will be remaining. So that remained daughter cell is called as Megaspore mother cell. That remain daughter cell is called as what? Megaspore mother cell. Okay. See once again I will repeat. Megasporogenesis is nothing but the process of formation of megaspore from the megaspore mother cell is called as megasporogenesis. And here we are going to see that two process. So till here we can see the megasporogenesis. From here we are going to see the mega gametogenesis. Why? Because embryo sac is formed over here. Okay, embryo sac or we can see development of the female gametophyte we can see. See, megasporogenesis is also called as development of the female gametophyte. What megasporogenesis is also called? It is also called as development of female gametophyte. So, until the formation of the single megaspore mother cell, we are calling it as a megasporogenesis. And the next from that, that is single megaspore mother cell undergoes continuously a series of three mitotic cell division. Okay, the first mitotic cell division, if it is occurring, then it produces two daughter cells. Okay, then second mitotic cell division, if, if it is occurring, then from the single cell, two more daughter cells are produced here. Okay. So, single cell undergoes mitotic cell division, produces four daughter cells. Then further, the four daughter cell undergoes the third mitotic cell division and produces the eight daughter cell. Okay. And produces the eight daughter cells. See here, the archaeosporial cell present near to the nucellar region undergoes periclinal division, produces the two cells. Okay, produces the two cells. One is called as outer parietal cell, outer parietal cell and inner sporogenous cell. Outer parietal cell and inner sporogenous cell. Further, inner sporogenous cell 
undergo meiotic division further inner sporogenous cell undergo meiotic division produces four daughter cells among the four daughter cells three daughter cells are degenerated one is remaining and that one cell is called as megaspore mother cell and here students we are going to see the definition called as monosporic development what we are going to see here the definition that is monosporic development now what is the monosporic development here monosporic development means the development of the embryo sac or the female gametophyte the development of the embryo sac development of embryo sac or female gametophyte or female gametophyte from the single megaspore mother cell from the single megaspore from the single megaspore mother cell is called as monosporic development what do we call monosporic development it is very important for one mark okay now this mono single megaspore mother cell undergoes first mitotic division produces two daughter cells further each daughter cell undergo second mitotic division produces four daughter cells further all the four daughter cells undergo third mitotic cell division produces the eight daughter cells what it is going to produce eight daughter cells further after the production of the eight daughter cells here each daughter cell starts the formation of the cell wall cell wall formation occurs to each daughter cell and then they are going to arrange by themselves okay they are going to arrange into three antipodal cells three antipodal cells two will come at the center that is two central cell and one sorry three will go towards the micropyle see here students so they are going to arrange themselves into three antipodal cells then two central cells then towards the micropyla region we are going to see three what we are going to see three cells towards the micropyla region after the formation of the eight cells okay after the formation of the eight cells we are going to see the three antipodal cells are arranged towards the stelacel side two central cell are present towards the at the center of the embryo sac and two synergids and one egg is arranged at the micropyla region so this process is called as what gametogenesis what do we call this process gametogenesis microsporogenesis and the gam my uh, mega sorry mega sporogenesis and the mega gametogenesis both the process we people have seen here that is the development of the female gametophyte or the egg we can say and uh, here the development of the sporogenous tissue that how the sporogenous tissue is going to convert into a single mega spore mother cell so this completes your mega sporogenesis well students this is the diagram of the mega sporogenesis so you can see the archesporial cell undergoes the periclinal division produces the two daughter cells actually two daughter cells are there that is outer parietal cell and the inner sporogenous cell so here two daughter cells should come okay outer parietal cell and inner sporogenous cell and uh, that inner uh, sporogenous cell will undergo the meiotic cell division produces four daughter cells so these uh, four among these four daughter cells so those four daughter cells are called as megaspore tetrad and among these four daughter cells the three daughter cells are degenerated these three daughter cells are degenerated and one is remaining and that is called as what megaspore mother cell one cell is remaining that is called as megaspore mother cell that megaspore mother cell undergoes continuous mitotic a series of mitotic cell division we will say first mitotic cell division produces two daughter cells 
Second mitotic cell division produces four daughter cells. Third mitotic cell division produces eight daughter cells. Immediately after the formation of the eight daughter cells, the cell wall formation occurs to each cells, and then the them cells are going to arrange into the antipodal cells, central cells, and the egg and the synergies. So this is the development of the female gametophyte, and the diagram is very important. You have to note down the diagram. Okay.